Hello SPCians! Today's experiment is all about transport mechanism. The objectives for this experiment is to demonstrate defiltration, diffusion, and osmosis, as well as to identify and define the net movement of the solutes and solvent in filtration, diffusion, and osmosis. The experiment discussed in this video is provided as a resource for SPC senior high school students. Please do not do this at home. These are the materials and reagents for this experiment. Hot plate Test tube rack Droppers Graduated cylinder Test tubes Beakers Erlenmeyer flasks Watch glass Funnel Filter paper Steering rod Dialysis bag and holder Label tapes and markers Starch solution Lugos iodine solution Silver nitrate solution Sodium chloride 2% potassium ferrocyanide and 5% copper sulfate Table sugar Benedict's solution and methylene blue solution starch powder gelatin as well as dried raisins for this experiment we're going to do three setups the filtration diffusion and osmosis we're also going to do test for sodium chloride and test for starch for both filtration and diffusion as well as test for glucose for diffusion. Let's start with the filtration test. Make a filtration setup with the filter paper lining the funnel. Fold the filter paper in half and fold it twice to form a 90 degree center angle. Put the stacked filter paper in three layers on one side and open one layer on the other side to form a funnel. The filter paper should be below the side of the funnel. First step, we dissolved 1 teaspoon sodium chloride crystals in about 50 ml of diluted starch solution. Next, we pour the solution into the filter paper lined funnel.
now we wait until all solution is completely filtered. Then the filtrate is now ready for the test for sodium chloride and the test for starch. Test for sodium chloride. First, we get 5 ml of the filtrate and placed it in a clean test tube. Next, we add a drop of silver nitrate. The formation of a white precipitate indicates the presence of sodium chloride. Next is the test for starch. We get 5 ml of the filtrate and placed it in a clean test tube. We add 10 drops of Lugol's iodine solution. Blue-black color indicates the presence of starch. Next, we have the diffusion test. In a prepared gelatin in a test tube, add 5 drops of methylene blue dye on the surface of the gel. Observe after 1 hour, 2 hours, and 3 hours. Next, we prepare a starch solution by mixing 1 teaspoon of starch in distilled water and heat using the hot plate. Do not let the solution boil. Afterwards, we add 1 tablespoon table salt and 2 tablespoons table sugar. Stir and let it cool.
Next, pour some of the starch salt sugar solution into the dialysis bag. Tie each ends using a clip. Suspend the setup in a beaker filled with distilled water. Let it stand for 15 to 30 minutes. Afterwards, we test the water in the beaker for starch and sodium chloride, following the same procedures during the filtration test. We add a drop of silver nitrate. The formation of a white precipitate indicates the presence of sodium chloride. We add 10 drops of Lugol's iodine solution. Blue-black color indicates the presence of starch. Test for glucose. Place 5 ml of the Benedict solution into a test tube and add 10 drops of the water from the beaker.
heat in boiling water for 5 to 10 minutes. Formation of a green, yellow, or red precipitate indicates the presence of glucose. And lastly, we have the osmosis. For the first setup of osmosis, you can do this at home. Place a few dried raisins in a glass of water. Make sure that the water is distilled. And note the size and wrinkled appearance of the raisins and observe the changes after an hour. Next, with the medicine dropper or pipette, Carefully place a small drop of 5% copper sulfate solution on a watch glass containing 2% potassium ferrocyanide solution. A membrane forms around the copper sulfate drop. This membrane is semi-permeable. That is, it is permeable to water molecules but not to the solutes present. And that's it. Thank you for watching and see you on our next experiment.